AP classes have the potential to help students become better thinkers, to be someone who can uh, take information and synthesize and analyze it better. They become better writers. They become better reasoners. Um, they become more canny students in everything that they do, not only in school, I think, but also in life. AP classes are close closer to what you're going to actually get in, on the, in the college setting. There's, you're probably going to hear the word rigor. Uh, I like to say depth and breadth of knowledge. And in order to get that in a regular classroom, that's going to require students to do a lot of, a greater amount of out of the classroom work so that we can, in particular like with science, so we can do in-depth problem solving, research, labs, and things like that during the class time. AP courses offer a variety of challenges for students. Um, academic integrity is evident um, in all AP subjects and definitely in visual arts. They have the opportunity to explore um, a variety of mediums. Um, they get to uh, learn new techniques, but they get to really, really develop those that they've already learned, that they like and they're interested in. Well, the biggest difference in AP and pre-AP, at least in my class, is going to be the actual amount of content that is taught, uh, the pace is a little faster, and the writing assignments are a little bit more extensive. AP courses differ from regular courses because they have more of a college feel to it. Um, they do challenge you um, to um, kind of um, go beyond what you are used to. AP classes can improve your thinking skills and they teach you how to meet deadlines and stay on task and think in different ways. AP classes put you in smaller class sizes and they give you more one-on-one -on -one relationship with your teachers and you do more than just the book work and worksheets. You do more of interactive stuff and more discussions and more deeper level um, questions and answers. I think the benefit for students of, of participation in advanced placement classes is really a dual benefit. Uh, for one, the student has the very real benefit of having the potential to start college with a number of college credits already under their belts. I've seen students who participated in AP classes and took AP tests successfully who began college almost as a college sophomore because they had so many college hours that they had earned while in high school. I have been very fortunate to already know what I want to do with my life. I know I want to be a biology major before I go into PA school. So some schools I'll either be a pre-med or I'll be a pre-PA depending on which school I end up going to. And the AP classes that I've taken, they've prepared me because I've gotten college credit for some of those classes. So I actually already have the ability to start college as a sophomore. So it's one less year that I have to pay for, but I'm really focused on getting my PA degree. And then I want to travel orphanages and third world countries with the physician's assistant degree. I would like to be an architect and through my AP art classes and my AP math classes and history classes, I've learned that I can combine all those skills to pursue my interest in architecture. Uh, the biggest benefits are, like I said, uh, rigor is established in an AP class. Uh, the amount of the details that the book gives you is more geared towards, because we only use college textbooks, we don't use high school textbooks. So they get used to the idea of there's no glossary at the end, you know, there's no like cheat sheets or questions that kind of help you along. A lot of it is just, you know, pretty cut and dried. You have to figure it out for yourself and find the information. So it gives you skills needed to really, you know, advance yourself, push your boundaries, and figure out, you know, what you know versus what you need to know. Um, and hopefully that's where the teacher comes in. You know, we fill in those gaps for you. Um, whenever there is a competition for scholarships and for money to help pay for school, that students on the transcripts who have taken AP classes will have an edge and they get that extra point or point value when they're trying to determine who they're gonna accept or qualify for a scholarship. I have two children, both of whom graduated from high school with over 30 hours of AP credit. Um, that allowed them to go into college as a sophomore 
Um, and both of them, along with numerous students that I had in the past, have always would come back and say that they were well prepared for college, that they did not have any difficulty adjusting to the rigor of a university setting. The expectations for a student in an AP class um, are probably the greatest one is the out of class work time. Um, so that we can study in a greater depth and a greater breadth the curriculum and expose them to more knowledge and prepare them for a higher level thinking, we have to ask them to do more out of class. So therefore I would say that the out of class time, the expectations will be higher. And then I think the analysis skills, especially for, and the math skills, especially for science AP classes, needs to be at a relatively high level. Pre-AP and AP, there will be some homework. Uh, it's not necessarily um, work, if it's art, because that's, it's great. But on, on level classes, there's not going to be as much homework, only if you don't finish things up. And so there is a little outside work that's, that's needed. This is the type of student who has an extremely strong work ethic, who loves English, who loves to write, who um, is willing to work hard and not be afraid to, um, or accept constructive criticism. Because the test, or the class is intense, it is difficult. And so you're not always gonna make an A and you're gonna fail sometimes. And that student can't get upset or feel personally affected by a poor score, they have to go, okay, she knows what she's talking about. She's been trained. I know what the test that they are about to take looks like. So they need to be um, willing or able to take that criticism, go back, work hard, and fix any mistakes and try to achieve to that particular level. The type of kid that typically succeeds in my AP class is one that has a very good work ethic. If I had a choice between a student that was naturally gifted brilliantly and a student that might be a B, C average student but they work their tails off, I would much rather have the child that works really hard because that shows that they have the interest and they're able to continue in the fashion. When things get hard, they don't give up. I think the best student to take AP classes is just someone that wants to work hard because even if you don't know the knowledge and you're struggling with it, as long as you're willing to work hard and work with your teachers, then you can do well in the class. There's been some times that I had no clue what the teachers were talking about, but because I wanted a good grade and I wanted to be challenged, I was able to learn more and work with my teacher to still get the grade that I wanted. You gotta care about your grades. Um, you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot of hours outside of class, on the weekends, sometimes on Saturdays. Even though people might not like it, you might have to you know, write an essay, get something done. Um, I would say the, the type of kid that benefit the most out of an AP class is one that wants to grow more than just in the particular subject. They want to uh, build like a skill set to help apply to any subject. I think you have to be able to uh, be okay with challenging yourself and being able to um, commit to it because in order to have, like, to be successful in an AP course, you have to be able to put in the hard work and be able to be okay with um, maybe not getting the grade you want. So just challenging yourself in every step of the way because um, in the end, it'll all be worth it. Someone who is diligent and is okay with uh, struggling and failing because in AP classes, it's nothing like what you've been used to. It's a lot different and uh, at first it'll struggle and you might fail and you might make some bad grades but uh, you have to persevere through that and work diligently and um, get through all that and then you'll start succeeding. Students that are dedicated to putting in the time that you need for AP courses. AP courses are much more difficult, some more like much more than others obviously, but you just need to go into it knowing you need to put all that time into that test and preparing. Not only towards the end of the year, but you need to be concentrating 24-7 in that class because the stuff you learn from day one till the last day before the test is all beneficial. Highly motivated um, students are the ones that do the best. There's a lot, I, I've always believed that you can, I could teach anybody to draw. Maybe not like Leonardo da Vinci, but I could teach anybody to draw that's willing. And so I think it's that open-mindedness and willingness and, and understand that we're working bell to bell. 
Um, this is not a blow-off class. It is, uh, I think, fun because it's, it's what you want to be doing. Um, any student who wants a challenge, um, a student who is intellectually curious, you know, it's not just uh, okay with them to have someone tell them about something. They want to know more. They want to know why something works the way it does. Um, that's the type of student that would be successful in an AP or pre-AP class. Um, one class that I really struggled with in the beginning was AP Chemistry. Um, at first I, I went in because I was really good at pre-AP Chemistry and I went in in AP Chemistry thinking that like you know I had this and everything but it was much different of course it's an AP course so it is college based and um, of course um, I had tests where I failed like I got C's, D's and you know that was kind of bringing me down but at the same time like I kind of knew what I wanted to do in college and it just motivated me more and because I feel um, as an AP student, um, you want to be at the best you can, and, but there will be times where you might not get the grade you want, and that'll bring you down, but of course, but you just have to realize, like, what is the outcome that I can take from this, and that's what motivated me, so I just kept going on. And uh, I took AP English in 10th grade. I've taken every year since then, but in 10th grade, I had Ms. Swisher, and she's a great teacher, but at first, I wasn't really prepared for it, so I had struggled at first, and um, through the first nine weeks, I had a C. And the first test, I didn't do really, I didn't do well at all. I uh, got like a 60 on the first test, so that was a big shock to me, and that really, it like really worried me. But that um, inspired me to work harder. So after that, I uh, worked really hard to get my grade up to an A. So by the end of the year, I had an A, and I definitely recommend taking AP English too. And then I also learned a lot in Miss Swisher's class. She really challenged us to think deep, and we really, really, really had to work for whatever grade we wanted in there. So that was the first time I was ever satisfied with a B because I ended with an 89 in the first semester and I was so happy to have a B. I'm thinking about going into the medical field and so I'm taking AP Chem right now and that's a very difficult class and I am struggling in that class but I think that that'll help me in my future because going into that I kind of know more about chemistry and know more about biology, know more st about stuff like that that I can add on in the future and I think it'll help me, so yeah, definitely. That's probably my favorite thing about an AP course is seeing those kids who come in, they are prepared to an extent, but to see them struggle along the way. I had one student, for example, who never finished a timed writing the entire year, but kept pushing, kept trying, or in a timed writing maybe wrote half of an essay. But by the time we got to the actual AP exam, by the time that we were there, she came back and said, Mrs. Lewis, I finished every single essay. I completed that test and came through with a college credit. I mean, it happens time after time after time. And I tell these kids who do struggle, hang in there. It'll be around April, it'll be around May. Don't give up, you will get there. It takes a full, almost seven to eight months for them to get where they need to be. And they, oh gosh, the rewards are, are wonderful once they do get there. Um, I had a student um, that was a sophomore and I didn't know her and she seemed a little unique and, and didn't seem to have many friends. She seemed to be kind of isolated. And she did a project that was really, really good. And I went off on her how great it was. And she ended up, um, we entered it in a contest, and she ended up winning um, a Scholastic Art um, Award for that at the regional level and then at the national level. Well. Unbeknownst to me, um, I didn't realize that she had wanted to drop out of school before that. She had um, just hated school. And she, because of the, the art classroom, and this was the pre-AP class she was in, she started excelling, she started getting friends. <laughs> she ended up taking AP Studio the next year and did a drawing portfolio and earned a score of five which is the top, and then the next year she did a portfolio and earned a score of four. Um, she ended up getting, um, applying to Cooper Union, which is a New York school. Uh, only 60 kids get in from the entire 
United States and it's free, she was one of 60 to get in. So that, to me, it wasn't just me, it was her, it was her art. It was, AP recognizes that. They recognize the good parts of kids that maybe those kids don't recognize yet. And I've had students that have never, like I said, that have never taken an AP class. I've had students that never have had anybody in their, their entire family ever go to college, but that was their goal, so they wanted to try to take an AP class. And uh, one student I think of in particular, she really didn't do well on her first test, and she went to the bathroom crying, and I'm like, just stay, just stay. She said, I want to go to college, but nobody in my family's ever gone to college. I said, just stay, just stay. And by the end of the year, she was getting 70s and 80s, which to me is great, and actually passed the AP test, went on and has graduated from college, and we're still in touch. And she just is like, thank you, Mrs. Grottle, because she really loved the area of environmental. She's the perfect example of a student that wanted to work hard and challenge herself, but maybe wasn't you know, uh, a national merit finalist or in the top 1% in the class, but She's very successful now and has uh, completed her dream. Regardless whether a student decides to take advanced placement courses, um, on-level classes, uh, decides to seek college credit through a concurrent experience, there are a wealth of wonderful opportunities uh, academically for students at Broken Arrow High School. Uh, you can have, as a student, a fantastic experience in any of those academic settings. The real question comes down to what is right for you? Learning about the discipline, learning about the successful living skills, learning about how to go deep into a curriculum, how to take a test, how to study. Uh, those types of things are far more important in the long run because that's really gonna help you at the next level. The next level, if you're competing to get into some type of you know, med school or PT school or whatever it may be, you only have one chance. This is like practice. I always tell my students this is like practice. You're practicing for the real world. And the next is, your next phase is really the real world. So get all the practice you can, get all the experience you can, and AP is a great way to start getting that high level practice.